What's up there, Workforce? Chris here with work to game and I wanted to talk a little bit about keyboard layout. So I've got a really plain screen here. It's just me and a keyboard, and uh, Brian has been asking me to make a video for a long time because apparently I play with my keyboard and mouse wrong. Uh, and so I wanted to talk about why I play the way I do and how I find it more optimal uh, for MMOs. Now he plays on PC with a uh, controller. Uh, I think he plays with an Xbox controller, but you know, like Yoshi P. Uh, but I play on PlayStation with a keyboard and mouse, so we're exactly swapped. And uh, I just find it way more enjoyable. We play for hours on end. There's not a wrong way to do it. Keyboard and mouse is a little better. Uh, and what I like about keyboard and mouse is that it gives me a lot more keybinds without any complex, you know, combining bumpers to pull anything off. I have more keybinds than I could possibly ever use. And it lets me bind really odd things. Uh, it lets me type freely while I'm playing. And uh, I've actually found that I prefer to play where I'm using both hands pretty much all the time. And so the way I do that is instead of using WASD, right? So right here, WASD is how everything is bound and W is gonna send you forward, A is gonna take you left, D is gonna take you right, S is going to take you back. That is the traditional layout. It has been that way for a long time. The first and most significant change I made came from World of Warcraft rating back when it was known that you would get a better server location update if you strafed instead of turn left. So what I did is the first change I made, I don't know, a long time ago, is I moved A and D to strafe. Uh, and I do this on literally every game, not just Final Fantasy XIV. So I'm going to be discussing this from the standpoint of this is my preferred MMO control layout. I actually changed my layout to this in Minecraft, ESO, any game I play. Um, this is that's an RPG where I'm controlling one character. This is what I do. Now that's the first change. The next thing I realized is you start to play these games where you want a lot of things bound, right? So, you know, Q and E are pretty common, R, F, C, okay? Now we're talking about X and Z being a little rare because that, that middle finger has to come back and, and pull that. And then you can always push shift, but your, your pinky is bunched right up against there. So shift is almost kind of squeezing down there for the fact that you leave your hand on this. Now, the advantage of this layout is that it, it's it's pretty traditional, it takes one small change. Now you do need your mouse to change direction because at this point all you can do is move left, move right, forward, backward. You cannot change the direction you're facing without your mouse. Uh, and that's where right click follow comes in if you want to kind of grab a bite to eat or something like that. But I just found that this is a, I get a better level of control. It lets me move my character left and right while I'm looking at something else. I can actually strafe around it. I just found it to be a cleaner and easier experience to gauge where my character was at all times. And then when I wanted additional abilities, I shifted the entire layout to the right one key. So now instead of W, A, S, D, I use E, S, D, and F. Okay, and that sounds really odd on its face. Why would you do that? But what you've done is you've now allowed your pinky to handle Q, A, Z, and shift. Um, and a lot of times I'll have F in as my push to talk key. Uh, and so that's a very easy reach down here. So I can do that while talk, you know, and my hand just rests here. It's not a big stretch at all. You can tell Chuck is, is very upset that people don't know about this. For those of you that don't know, my puppy uh, is, is still at an age where me talking in a room other than him absolutely drives him nuts, but we're working on it. Uh, he's totally fine until I start talking. Um, I could go in that room and ignore him for hours and it would be fine. Uh, so to continue moving, this this has actually freed up a ton of space. This also frees up more numbers. If I put my middle finger on W, the furthest I can reach my point, pointer finger comfortably is five, where I still maintain absolute control over the A key. But as soon as I start reaching beyond that, I'm stretching and I risk pulling my middle finger off to E. And since I use E as a spell ability, that means instead of moving forward, I'm now casting a spell. That is not what you want at all. And I can technically reach out to like seven, but that's that's a real stretch, okay? You're, you're, I mean, you're looking at, these are very uncomfortable positions to hold. If I shift to the right, I gain that one extra key. So whether your finger stops at the five, the six, the seven, maybe you have way bigger hands than me, it stops on the eight, you're gaining one key regardless by moving one key to the right. 
Um, this actually puts my thumb where it rests firmly on the spacebar instead of off to the right on the spacebar, which gives me the ability to use Command, Alt, Control as modifier keys if I want, although I really have never needed them. Uh, there's been very few games where I felt that this basic key surrounding me and Shift doesn't do it for me. Now that's, that's my basic layout. Now what do I do in addition to that for games that have multiple classes you play like 14 or multiple alts you play in games like WoW? What I then do is I actually standardize my keybinds. Uh, and so I make sure that on every class out of ESDNF, my opener ability that I'm going to repeat often, not an opener ability you, you only use as part of your opener, but your opener ability that shows up over and over and over in a rotation always starts on A, and then I move to G. R is where I put my first dot, my first dot that goes up that needs to be up all the time. T is usually where I put a stun or a second dot. Uh, X and C are oftentimes stuns, interrupts, gap closers. Um, and then Q is usually an ability that shows up only a few times per rotation. Uh, and so that's kind of my basics. And then on shift, shift Q is always where I put my sprint, my movement speed increase, anything like that. Shift R is always my mount. Um, and then I, I have various things that I do outside of that. Like shift T is usually a consumable. Um, up on my numbers, you know, there's certain spell types that I'll put there. That way when you change classes often, the important thing here is not that you know how I bind my keys, but that you learn okay, by using your shift keys to always mean the same thing, then you only have to re-remember, okay, what's on R, what's on A, because shift Q is always, if I'm playing WoW, shift Q on my monk does the roll, shift Q on my druid does sprint, uh, and those are effectively the same thing. Uh, and so that's, that's a big help for me, and that does mean that on WoW, Q does nothing for my priest. And that's important that I leave it that way, because otherwise I set a pattern that when I change classes, and that's because priests don't have any way of running faster. They're just always unbelievably slow. Uh, and, and when you move to games like 14, where everybody has the same sprint, Shift-Q, you can actually set that up on a bar where that bar doesn't change. Um, so that bar is just fixed. And so if I drag a consumable onto Shift-T, even as I change classes, my shift bar is actually shared among all my classes. Uh, and so e the only things that are allowed to go there stay there. So shift X, for example, shift X, shift Z is, shift Z is, takes me home, shift X pulls up the menu, uh, shift X and Z and wow are my two different hearthstones. And so that allows me to just kind of push shift X, get up, go get a glass of water. There's no need to click on a bar or anything like that. Uh, and that's just been something that's worked very well for me. Consistency is the key here. Uh, I've, I've played over the years with different mice. I've got uh, just on my desk in front of me because I think that mice preference per game really matters. I edit with a different mouse than I play with. This is the number of mice I have on my desk. I've had gaming mice over the years that have had like 27 bajillion buttons on there. I've tried the mice with the ball where it changes your wrist position. Um, the important thing is consistency. And so if you're gonna bind things to your mouse, make sure you always play with the same mouse, regardless. If you're gonna play somewhere else, be sure that mouse is the first thing you pack. And so I would just say that consistency there is key. I don't remember which mouse is currently set up on this computer. I think it's this one. There we go. So that if you end up pushing a key or anything like that, you're being incredibly consistent and you're setting patterns for yourself. And be sure you train yourself. Training dungeons, easy dungeons, things, uh, training dummies, things like that. Go out, grind mobs that you know can't kill you. Run through your rotation on something that won't die in one hit, but won't kill you. Uh, that way, if you're, you're changing things, you can kind of get a feel for, you know, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll just run and I'll push A and then G on a new class or a class that I haven't played in a long time. And if I keep pushing R because I think it's going to call for a different dot than it does, just move the dot. There's no need to fight it. Just move the dot and settle into the new pattern and the new routine and then keep it consistent after that. Um, so you can really make it feel kind of like riding a bike. As a matter of fact, I can actually show up and play on somebody else's computer and I can tell you what my things are key bound, not from memorization, not from having a screenshot, but because the muscle memory kicks in and, and the first time we get into an encounter and a spell goes off and I go to stun it as a tank and I go, oh, that's where my stun goes. My stun is not, yep, yep, this, this tank has three stuns and I put one down on V and I didn't know that until I went to push it and it didn't work. 
Um, and so, you know, just consistent things. My my uh, limit break is always on the same key for all my classes. So when somebody says limit break, there's never a question of where is it? I never play my summoner. Where is my limit break? I know where it is because it's in the exact same place it is on my tank and on my healer. So I hope this helps. This is a video that once again, Brian has been asking for for a very long time. I know it's not visually crazy. There's not a lot going on here, especially compared to my last two where there's some beautiful trailers showing. But I think this is an important topic, and I think it's something that can change the way you get joy out of a game. It's just as important as Brian's controller guides. Um, setting up things like this, this also starts to open up the importance of your UI and stuff, which if you've ever watched me stream, is something that I always say I'm going to get to and I never do. But it is important, and I should do it. Uh, so, my name's Chris with Works Game. I hope you guys have a fantastic day, and I'll see you next time. What's going on, Workforce? Chuck here. It's been a good long month, and I just wanted to say... Thank you so much for hitting that subscribe button. I just wanted to invite my friend Terry, the T-Rex from Texas, out here. Howdy, y'all. How's it going? This is a really fun end screen video. We should have written a script, right, Chuck? Oh, I agree totally. In fact, I think both our voices sound exactly the same. What are we to do? I don't know. I think we need to get a better voice actor. Yes, I agree. Who's who? Which one of us is talking? Ah... <laughs> They're still here. What are we gonna do? <laughs> I guess we're gonna stop and record. <laughs>